Okay. So back to talking about the process of statistics. Inferential statistics uses methods that take sample results extend those results to the whole population and measure the reliability of those results. So, of course, this is an election year. So, I don't know how much attention you guys pay. I don't pay a whole lot of attention, but occasionally I run across a poll that says, you know, so many percentage of people favor Donald Trump and so many percentage of people favor Joe Biden. Well, of course, they cannot possibly interview every voter in this country. There's just too many of them. So they take samples and using statistical methods, they say, okay, based on our samples, this is what we think is going to happen or you know, this percentage of the whole population of voters favor Biden and this percentage of the whole population favor Trump, just based on a small sample of voters. So if we state that we're 95% confident that between 74% and 82% of all students would return a $100 bill they found, we've gauged in inferential statistics. So this statement includes a level of confidence that is our 95% and that's the measure of the reliability. It also provides a range of values. Which accounts for the variability. So a lot of times the headlines will leave this out, but they'll say, you know, I'll just make up some number. 3% plus or minus half a percent of people hate chocolate. So that plus or minus helps us get that range of values, which again accounts for the variability in data. So one goal of inferential statistics is to estimate a parameter. And a parameter is just a numerical summary of a population. So statistics and parameters are the same, except for a statistic describes a sample and a parameter describes a population. So just remember, sample statistic, they both start with S, P 
population parameter, they both start with P. So let's determine whether the underlying value in these examples is a parameter or a statistic. So the percentage of female students at Roan State in the fall of two, of, sorry, 2019 was 65.1%. Okay, hopefully you guys think that that is a parameter. I know sometimes it can be hard to tell, but we're treating Rome State as a population because we can measure every single person at Rome State. We have a whole department that does that. Okay. In B, it says, in a recent survey, 26% of Iowa voters who were surveyed said they would vote for Bernie Sanders in the Iowa caucuses. You can tell this is a little old from last spring, I guess, when it was still a primary season. I pulled that out of the headlines, so... I'm not advocating any candidate over another, just pulling stuff out of the headlines to show you that this stuff is everywhere. Anyway, this one, hopefully you said, is a statistic. A good indication that it's a statistic is that we have a survey. Generally, any time we survey someone it's or survey people, it's going to be a statistic. Because surveying creates a sample. All right, let's talk about the process of statistics now. So the first thing you want to do is identify the research objective. In other words, what question or questions are we trying to answer? Are we trying to figure out, you know, people's incomes? Are we trying to figure out if a medication is effective? Are we trying to figure out if the medication has side effects that mean that it shouldn't be approved? So the question must clearly identify the population to be studied. Are we studying everyone in the United States? Are we studying everyone in the world? Are we studying college students only? Are we studying students at a certain college? So the population is important, so it's necessary that we identify it in the question that we're trying to answer. So after we identify the question, we collect the necessary data. So we properly collect data through a sample since collecting data from a whole population is expensive. Also, if we collect data from the whole population, we call that a census, which is why the United States Census is called the census because they're supposed to count every single person within the borders of the United States. Okay. After we collect the data, we have to describe the data. So that's where we use our descriptive statistics 
And that just gives the researcher an overview of the data and helps determine the type of statistical methods to use. If we're looking at the percentage of people that do something, we use different mathematical models than if we are looking at the average of something, for example. So after we describe the data, then we perform our inference. So we use the appropriate methods based on what our descriptive statistics were to extend the results of our sample to the whole population and report a level of reliability. This reporting a level of reliability is very important. Okay, so let's look at, it, at an example of this process. The Gallup organization conducted a survey of 1,018 adults age 18 and older living in the U.S. and asked, if you had $1,000 to spend, do you think investing it in the stock market would be a good or a bad idea? Of the 1,018 adults, 46% said it would be a bad idea. The Gallup organization reported that 46% of all adults age 18 and older living in the United States thought it was a bad idea to invest in the stock market with a 4% margin of error with 95% confidence. So what is the research objective here? Well, what did they ask? They said, if you had $1,000 to spend, do you think it would be a good or bad idea to invest in the stock market? So the objective was to determine the proportion Remember, that's the same as percentage. Of all adults aged, I'm just going to write 18 plus, living in the U.S. Who think okay you think investing a thousand dollars in the stock market is a bad idea. So what's the population? It should be all adults aged 18 plus living in the U.S. And the sample should be the 1,100, or sorry, the 1,018 adults aged 18 plus living in the U.S. So you can see the sample and the population have the same category of people. It's just the population is all of those people and the sample is a smaller number of those people. So what can be inferred from this survey? Well, we'll have to finish that in the next video. Sorry.